Hi, and welcome to the Boat Princess podcast. My name is Nikki Vo, and I'm your host. I am a boat owner, a marina owner, a director on the Marina Industries Association, and a huge advocate for boating. In this series, I'm sharing the stories from every nook of the boating industry with the intention of encouraging more women to join me and for more women to get behind the helm too. I want to share the experience and opportunities of boating, of the boating industry, and I want you to join me as I bring the conversations and answer all the questions you've had. Boating is not just for the glamorous and rich and famous. It's full of beautiful and interesting people making the most of our natural environment and getting out there, enjoying the waterways. So let's set off the lines, take over the helm and escape to the world of boating. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Boat Princess podcast. I am here at Met's Trade. We've got a little bit of atmosphere in this one because we've found a secret little spot just outside the VIP lounge um, because I ran into someone who is on the panel at the Women and Marine event tomorrow and I desperately wanted to grab her and have an interview with her because she's a superstar in the industry and I wanted to share her skills with you. So Michelle Hildyard, Vice President product management and business development at Ray Marine. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Nikki. Delighted to be here. <laughs> I know I've suddenly put you on a sofa and prompt you to, to answer questions on the Boat Princess podcast. But That's fine. It's probably the best way to do it, actually. <laughs> um, so, Ray Marine are obviously a massive part of the electronics of the boating industry. Met's Trade must be a big show for you, right? It's a huge show for us. We had the Dame Awards this morning and our product, the performance display, the Alpha Instrument, won its best category uh, for electronics. And we are absolutely delighted. That's so exciting. What a great start. It's a brilliant start to the show. We were really nervous beforehand, but yet we were absolutely delighted we got the award. Oh. Amazing. So tell me about that product. What What is that? So the Alpha Performance Instrument, it's a bit of a mouthful, is a sailing, mainly a sailing instrument. Um, it's been in the making for a few years now, and we wanted to really bring the professional side of sailing to the everyday boater. It's got great graphics. It's customizable. It's really going to revolutionize how people can race and sail their boats. Oh, amazing. What a great, great innovation. I love that. So you're here at Met's Trade. You've got an amazing position with Ray Marine and you've been doing that for quite a while. So let's step back um, okay. a little way yep. into your life to understand for the audience how you got there. Let's start with your education. Where did you go to school? Where did so your I'm life start? So I'm from the UK. You can probably tell by the accent. I, I've grown up in Hampshire. Uh, went to school in Hampshire, then went off to university at Reading, did a few years living up in London. And then uh, my husband and I, we actually met at uh, when I was at university. And then we split up when I went to live in London. He is an avid boater and he would never leave the South Coast. So he wanted to be by the water. I wanted to go and live in London. So we separated for a while. And then uh, after a few years in London, we got back together. And so I decided to make the move back down to the South Coast. And I came across a company called Ray Marine. So I have boated since I was about eight years old. My parents got me into sailing. We had a yacht when I was younger and a lot of our family holidays were away on the yacht. My husband, Phil, he was a very good sailor. And we actually met um, through sailing events uh, while I was at university. And when I came back down south, I saw a job advertised for Ray Marine. I thought, this is going to be great. I can combine what I love doing, being out on the water with a job. And so I took a job uh, 18 years ago now back with um, in supply chain. I started off in supply chain for Ray Marine. And I was responsible for a team of project managers who developed, who we did the supply chain part of the development of uh, new product introductions. Wow. Okay. So you just went, yep, I'm going to work for them. I love that. <laughs> That's great. They did have a job going, so I did apply for the job. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but it's wonderful that you you instantly saw, and I think 
this is the one of the things we need to explain about the boating industry. The boating industry is a lifestyle working in. It's 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 um, a family almost. Yes. Once you've been here a while and you get to know certain people, um, you build up such a great friendship with people here. You know, there's people who've got so much experience. You don't generally find people here who've been in the industry a long time and have a lot of um, knowledge and wisdom to impart for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Explain to our the audience exactly. You talked about supply. To explain what your role actually was when you started. So in the supply chain, we have, um, when we're developing new products, we have to build things like prototypes and um, the process for developing a product is very different to mainstream manufacturing. So one of my roles was to ensure that we had fast turn components, that we could manufacture um, quick turn parts uh, to be able to develop these prototypes. We also at the time uh, had manufacturing in the UK and it was the, I call it the great outsource period where the trend was to outsource um, and offshore a lot of manufacturing. So I was part of a team that went around and we looked at sites uh, globally and chose a location to outsource all of our manufacturing out of the UK. And at the time we went to Hungary. Okay. Quick turn. What does that mean? Fast. So when you're producing a, a mainstream product you've got hundreds and thousands of these products going down the line everything is um, ready to go all your drawings are there all your specifications there your work instructions all ready to go off down the line whereas when you're doing fast turn the engineers may want to change parts you want to be able to order them in parts in really quickly if you know you're manufacturing a, a product line you can put your forecast in months in advance and the components can be ordered in whereas when you're doing a prototype or you, you, you've got to be able to get those parts in quickly you need a small quantity very quickly to be able to run some boards off or run some product off to be able to test it okay all right so hungry You've outsourced to Hungary. Yes. How did that go? It was very successful. It was, well, I'm trying to think now, just before probably about 2006 or seven. I think we finalised the outsource. It took a lot of effort. We had to do a, a massive amount of pre-building of products, so build up stocks of product. So we then had to close the lines in uh, Portsmouth at the time and then transfer all of that test equipment, all of the um, know-how out to Hungary. It was an emotional time as well because... Brain Marine had had a factory in the UK for a long time. There were people who, you know, were going to be made redundant. And, you know, credit to them because they were the people that had to hand their job over to somebody else in Hungary and tra transfer all their knowledge and know-how. So as much as it was a success from an outsourcing perspective and we could manufacture more product and, and, and quicker, it was very sad to close the factory in Portsmouth and lose those people who were part of the Rain Marine family. Mm, absolutely. Because um, Rain Marine, we tend to think of as a US company, but... It actually originated in the UK, right? Kind of. So Raytheon was the original uh, company and there was uh, they were very commercial focused and very military focused. And there was a management buyout uh, early 2000s by a group of people who were based mainly in the UK. And they did a management buyout, just a leisure part, and they renamed themselves Raymarine. And we had a big office in both the UK and in the US. When the company floated and did an IPO, it was on the UK stock market. So it was actually Raymarine UK Limited. But we have a huge presence in the US and our heritage does stem from the US. And uh, today we have people both here in the UK, in the US, down in Australia. And actually we have um, sales offices globally. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of your engineering work's done in the UK, isn't it? Yes. So our sensor, traditional core sensors like radar, um, sonar, are all done out of the UK. And then we also we have a smaller engineering team out in the US now, looking more at our digital services, so apps and cartography. Okay. So you're in supply when you start. Yes. Then how do you progress? How does that happen? I was really lucky. I had. Um, at the time, the CEO and CFO were very supportive of me. I, I think I was quite ambitious when I was younger <laughs> and um, I wanted to grow and develop. And uh, they offered me a great opportunity to do a business development role, uh, working directly for them. Um, it was a really good opportunity. I learned a lot about finance, which wouldn't have been my strong point before then. And um, 
I did a lot of business development. So I did uh, a couple of office moves, funnily enough. We were doing quite acquisitive at the time and we bought uh, quite a number of our distributors at the time, which have now become subsidiaries. So we bought our Italian, our French, our German subsidiaries. So I got involved in a very different side of the business. So not actually operating within the business, but actually looking at how we could get some synergies and looking at other companies that would we could buy that would grow Ray Marine. Okay. Yeah. So real true business development, looking in from the outside and, yes. and, and saying, okay, how can I do this and how can yeah. I change this and how can I make this bigger? Yeah. So a growth pattern you were working on there? Yeah, we were trying to grow the business. It was a, I'd been part of a team in supply chain. This was a little bit more of a standalone role. Um, I enjoyed it, but I also did miss being part of a, a wider team. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you're doing at that point. Yeah. Then what happens? Then we had the terrible crash in 2008. Ouch. Yes. And uh, we had just moved to a very nice, large new offices that uh, we'd hoped to sublet parts out and we didn't. And um, I think with the banking structure we had at the time, uh, we were put up for sale. Right. Uh, we had a lot of interest from lots of different companies and we were acquired by a company called FLIR, who are an American company that do um, thermal cameras, thermal imaging, infrared, very successful company. And Raymarine fitted very nicely into that. They wanted to grow their marine business and Raymarine was a perfect vessel to combine the thermal technology they had into thermal cameras for the marine industry and use our distribution and our network to be able to grow their business. Within the boating industry. Yeah. And tap into the boating industry. That, exactly. So that was their way into it, as it were. Yes. Yeah. They had a, they did, they were already doing, they had, they had products ready for the market and they were um, doing some sales, but I think it was a way for them to really grow and develop that part of the business. Yeah, because this is an industry is all about network, isn't it? It is. And Ray Marine, yeah. um, one of the things I love about Ray Marine is it, ha it, has, it has been around so long. We have, um, I want to try and get the stats right, we have presence in over 110 countries worldwide and over 7,000 dealers and distributors working for us globally. Um, the great thing about Ray Marine is its service and support. And the reason I'm saying that is because that was my next role. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What a lovely segue there by, by Michelle. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah. shortly after Fleer required us, um, I got married and uh, had a, a, I think it was about eight, nine months out having my first child. Yep. And uh, when I came back, I was uh, asked to come back and look after customer service. Nice. For EMEA and APAC. Okay. All right. EMEA are? Europe, Middle East and Africa and the Asia Pacific region. Nice. Yes. Okay. So. It's a change of career path. Yes. Yeah. Even though you're in the same company, you've changed. Yes. It was, it was quite dramatically. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the great things about being part of a company that, um, has a lot of opportunity. There is, you know, I've managed to, to work in quite a few different departments to really give a holistic view of how a business works. And um, to be able to do, I think my job today really helps being able to have done lots of, see lots of different sides of the business and try and use different skills and learn different skills. Yeah. Yeah. Though you're really, really bringing some different viewpoints to your current position yes. because you've done all those different roles. Yes. Yeah. Customer service especially is I think everyone should go into customer service at one point because, you know, generally people are only phoning up when things are going wrong. And it's one of those jobs where every day is a firefight, which I did enjoy the not knowing what was going to happen next. Um, managing, you know, the team of people on the phone in product support who are you know, generally people only find out when they've got a problem, they can't do something. So it's a great way to learn about how you can improve your product and what, you know, what, what your customer problems are and, and, and thinking of ways of how you can solve them. Because that is, yeah, that's what we need to know, isn't it? Yeah. As a product creator, we need to know what the customer actually wants. Yeah. Or what their so actual can problem it. is. Yes. I mean, you know, what, what were their needs and wants? How can we make their boating life easier? How can we make it safer? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. All right. So you're in customer service. How long are you doing that for roughly? Quite a while. Now that must be about, I'm trying to think, 10 years, maybe eight, eight to 10 years, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And I sort of worked my way up. I, I started off with just, um, I said EMEA in Asia and then, um, my boss at the time, um, Jamie, he was a fabulous boss. He got promoted to be a GM of another business. So I took over the, the full global service role. Yeah. And for a while, I also looked after some other business units. So FLIR was um, separated into a commercial business unit and an industrial business unit and a government business unit. And we were part of the commercial business unit. And within there, there was maritime, but there were some other 
businesses as well. We had security, we had um, intelligent traffic systems, which are all the cameras that you see um, in tunnels and on motorways, you know, trying to make sure if there's a problem with the traffic, it helps support them. And they asked if I could consolidate all of the customer service and support. So that would be all the workshops, all of the um, uh, phone systems, so uh, product support teams into one big network. So I think I took on at that time a team of over 100 people Wow. Globally. Yeah. And my role was to basically put in really good processes and procedures and also manage to improve customer satisfaction and increase throughput through the workshop. So we're repairing more products and we uh, improve customer satisfaction. So that was I was really pleased with that. That was a great role. And I really enjoyed the challenge of um, having to take on not just marine at that point, but actually other industries and other technologies that I didn't know so much about. Yeah. So you're learning and you're challenging yeah. yourself at that point. And you've got a team of 100 or so. Are they all over the world? Or? Yes. I mean, they were UK, US, India, Dubai, Australia. The list keeps going. Yeah. I mean, they literally was a truly global team. <gasps> Amazing. Did you have to travel a lot because of that? Or? I did. And I, I really enjoy the travel. Yeah. Um, I love traveling to different countries. I love meeting people who I work with in different countries. The only downside is I've got a young family. And so I do really um, miss being away from the family. So since um, I've had the children, I've not really taken advantage as I'd love to when they're older is actually stay for a weekend somewhere and actually really go and see the city or country I'm visiting. Yes. Uh, but right now, you know, I like to get back and see my girls. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because that is a, is a real, it's a real wrench for mums and dads is exactly the same yeah. um that you want to travel and, and put as much into the the role as you possibly can but you've got that constant yes yank and guilt and and all those things going on as well haven't oh, you absolutely so my eldest um still now she won't thank me for saying this still gets very upset when I go away she's like mommy don't leave please don't go but I think you know when I'm gone they appreciate when I come back which is nice yes. but it is you know it's, it's the I work Monday to Friday. So I miss the sports um, activities. I sometimes miss the assemblies or the plays. Um, but I think it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make because I want my girls to grow up knowing that they can have a working mum who can um, make uh, time to go and do things. You know, I'm really lucky at Rain Marine, my manager, my boss, Gregoire, he is really flexible and, you know, often I'm able to sneak out and go and see them in a school play or a school assembly or if they're getting a special presentation. Um, so I don't feel I miss out too much, but as well, um, it is a wrench because you do feel guilty when you're not there at every single event and you are putting them into extra long childcare during the day. <laughs> I know, I know. Been there, done that. It's, yeah. it's, it's hard. It it's is. Hard. Yeah. Um, well, of course, when they get to high school, they don't want you there anyway. So No, so my eldest has just started <laughs> high school and we're just getting to that stage now where she's become a little bit more independent. <laughs> I know. I know my youngest used to say, oh, mum, really? Do you have to come into school? <laughs> Yeah, they go from loving you, adoring you to, yeah. to not loving you so much. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So you're doing an amazing role, managing a team of 100. That's a big, big role whilst yeah. effectively doing the full-time mum mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and having another baby in between as well. Oh, as you Yeah, do. number two came along. Okay. Little poppy came along, yes, yeah, in 2015. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a little break then as well. Uh, another nine months out. Yeah. And um, and then when did your role change? Did that change again? Yes. So in, when was it? Just before COVID hit, um, FLIR had taken more of a military and commercial focus and decided that they were going to look to divest Raymarine. So we sadly undid all the good work that I had managed to do over the past few years in consolidating all of these back-end functions to separating put them back and separating it all out again and pulling the Ray Marine piece of the business back into a standalone business that could be um, sold, yes. um, divested. Yeah. Uh, so worked on doing that and was part of the uh, management team when we went out to do um, the discussions with various potential buyers. And then COVID hit. So that all got put on hold. Yep. We all hunkered down. I think everyone in the marine industry in 2020 had a fairly tough year, very difficult time. Um, but we, you know, as a team and a, as, a, as a crew and as a, a company, we managed to get through that. And 
then when we popped out the other side in 2021, Teledyne, uh, Teledyne Technologies, uh, would, wanted to buy the whole of FLIR. So they bought the whole of FLIR, including Raymarine. They were really excited to have Raymarine as part of their business. Uh, they could see the value of us. So we are now part of the larger group of Teledyne. So does that mean you've had to join it all back up together again? No. <laughs> I'm not sure I could have done that again. <laughs> no, Teledyne have got quite a different way of thinking. They leave their businesses to run fairly independently. Okay. We um, share um, technologies and, and patents and various bits and pieces like that. But when it comes to um, running the business, we're fairly independent and standalone, which is you know, it's great. It's, it's great to have the Rain Marine and the FLIR um, maritime brands back together. Mm. And we really like each business to be run independently. So we now have the brand of Raymarine and the FLIR thermal maritime cameras as part of our business. So before we continue that amazing interview with our current guest, a little interlude from us here at The Boat Princess. If you'd like to be a guest on The Boat Princess, simply send us an expression of interest to our email at info at theboatprincess.com or send us a DM on Instagram. We are The Boat Princess on Instagram and uh, we'll send you our media kit and details as to how we work. Um, the, the podcast is incredibly popular worldwide and there is nothing like getting 45 minutes or so of somebody's ears entirely dedicated to what you're trying to achieve or perhaps what your company is trying to achieve. So we look forward to hearing from you. Okay, so thermal maritime cameras. Yes. Let's talk about those because tell me what they do how they well not how they do it we don't need to go into no, no, the technical please, no. <laughs> how, they, how they do it but tell me why they exist if you like so thermal cameras are amazing um you know when you're out and about during the day you can see all around you you can see everything turn the lights off come evening time and you really have no visibility on water there's no street lights there's no car headlights you've got your navigation lights but let's be honest they're not exactly uh, going to be able to let you see where you want to go. So thermal imaging is all about seeing in the dark. And it's a great technology that allows um, a lot of our customers who want to come and go sort of, you know, low light hours and at night time and use their boats overnight, that they can still have really good visibility around them and that they can still stay safe while they're out on the water. Yeah, so cool. And I, I guess we haven't explained to the listeners, just in case they don't know, what Raymarine actually does. Because Raymarine as a company um, produces navigational equipment for yachts and boats so yes yeah gets, give us some insight into that so raymarine is a yeah, marine electronics navigation company at its sort of origin um, but we like to think more of us as providing um, solutions for our customers so we combine sensors together to provide a safe navigation solution for a customer you know that could be through an autopilot to help them drive on a long journey through our lighthouse charts to be able to navigate the waters you know we're really proud we've only had our charts in the market for about three years but we you know we've had some great feedback they're really detailed i think there's you know slightly different to what's out on the market today to help our customers navigate to where they need to go we provide things like radar so when it's foggy when it's rainy you don't have that great visibility your radar can help you overlay onto a map of where structures are where even like little boys are on um so you can actually avoid them when you can't you haven't got great visibility but we have sonars so sonars to be used for um you know mainly noted for fishing so we've got a big fishing contingent so people can go out and big um uh, catch big fish catch big fish yes yeah <gasps> yes we love that yeah um and you're obviously screen orientated is that changing that technology in any way in the recent Times, yes. yeah. So what, what's, the, what's the, happening? The chart plotter was, I think, was always the heart of the boat, and it was where everything was displayed. Your radar information comes in, your sonar information comes in, your depth, your speed displayed on your instruments and stuff. Um, but I think the industry is changing. When I look at the automotive, you don't buy a car, you don't buy a BMW or a, a Mercedes and have a X brand on. You know, it's Tom Tom on your your navigation system and so you know so and so doing your, your heads up display it's you're just buying the car and I think yes. as a an industry we're still very fragmented you know everybody sort of does their own little piece 
does it integrate well together? Not massively well. Yeah. So one of the things I'd like to see as the industry you know, to grow it is to stop this fragmentation. I can see, you know, the way with connected boat, the internet of things, AI coming in, that we will start having boats that are more um, branded, the boat builder, should we say. Yes. And we as an electronics provider will provide a lot of the um, sensors and inputs to be able to help them deliver a great system for their customer. Yeah. And let, let me just explain to the listeners, when you order a new boat these days, um, you order the boat mm -hmm. and then you choose which electronics you want to put into it. Um, and people have their preferred brands. But as you say, if, if it were a, a system set up right from the get-go of the build of the boat, mm -hmm. then obviously it's going to be far better integration and and everything's going to work together a little bit better, isn't it? Yeah. So, so wouldn't that be great if boat builders actually did that? I'd be excited. About I think that. they want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I think they really do. I, the, the problem is, though, if you look at a dash of a boat, it's so dated. You've got the marine electronics equipment. You've got your bow thrust. It's a different kind of person. You've got your trim tabs. It's a different company. And everyone has their own shade of colouring for their um, you know display. Everyone's got their own UI, and it's 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 not a seamless integration and it's not a seamless experience for the customer and at the end of the day we're all here to for the customer the, yeah. we want to have the best the customer want to give the customer the best experience they can have yeah so yeah so that's maybe that's a, a future we can look forward to yeah I hope so I hope so yeah um so let's talk about you as a boater because I know you love your boating I love boating and your your husband was a sailor and I, th I think you've converted him to the dark side haven't you to the motor yachts well we were both sailors <laughs> and um he is a very passionate sailor he still sails now he still races now um I don't sail anymore I have I think since we started what I call the rat race you know working and stuff time we, we're time poor and um I'm more into getting on the boat now so we have a motor boat now we have a Fairline Targa 47 oh nice uh, lovely boat love yeah. that boat it was, it was an aspirational boat for us for many many years um, we started off with a 40 foot flybridge then went to the Fairline Targa 44 and we'd always wanted the, the 47 foot GT and you know it's, it's, it's nice to be able to have an aspiration and work for a number of years to be able to, to get that boat yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so I like to you know we like the water skiing we like the paddle boarding we like ring going uh, so it suits our lifestyle better now with not having as much time to get somewhere and go and relax in a bay, play with all the toys and a little bit safer with the kids as well. I've personally found that just, you know, not lots of ropes and sails and everything around with, with young kids. It's one of the other drivers for us to move into motorboating. Yeah, absolute drivers. Very good. Well Thank done. You. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that, uh, I don't know if you saw on the Dame Awards this morning, the, the, air pump that was fixed into the cockpit in the boat. Yes, the ScanStrut one. That yeah, is going to be revolutionary. I know. I just went, oh, yeah, we all need one of those, we do. don't we? Because we've got all of that. It's a really noisy pump yes. that we get out of the cupboard. and Yes. Yeah, so that'd that's, be brilliant. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, we were at the Dame Awards this morning and, of course, uh, Ray Marine won an award there, as Michelle said earlier. So that's, that's really exciting. Now, that boat that you have, I know you've had – one of my favourite things done to it because I love this company that you went to um, to do a, a complete refurbishment of your boat. Who was that? We went to SeaTag <gasps> and a big shout out to SeaTag because they have done the most amazing job with our boat. So as you said, um, she's 10 years old now and um, was looking at us a little bit dated and tired, especially when we had the kids being young on board, you know, a little bit. Uh, everyone who's got kids knows that there's little pen marks and little uh, <laughs> food stains that we, you don't want dying around. So yeah, we we had a huge refurb with Sea Tag. We had all the cockpit exterior done. My husband wanted his uh, helm seat completely redesigned, so they did a fabulous job of that. Um, we had the whole dash resprayed, uh, put in an all new Rain Marine equip electronic equipment. Obviously, oh, funny <laughs> that. that you had a connection there. <laughs> And then downstairs, we had new sofa, new carpets, new headlining, new walls, new headboards, new bed ends, everything. It, it literally is like a brand new boat. And I've got a shout out to uh, Sarah and the team there for doing the most amazing design on our boat. You know, I see some of the new boats coming out of the factory now, uh, more minimalist, should we say. The quilting, the design, the intricacy of the stuff they've done on our boat is absolutely fabulous. Yeah. And we're so pleased with it. 
Oh, that's great. Yeah, we have interviewed Sarah Luck on our podcast before. Have a listen to her episode. I've also interviewed Chris Gates from um, CTAG and Ellie Gates from CTAG, and that may give you a clue to how the name CTAG came about because it's Gates backwards. So um, brilliant company, brilliant concept, so good for the whole um, environmental impact of boats because, of course, boats – they have amazing, incredible hulls that last such a long time and engines that, that you know, average use 50, use 50 hours a, a year for, for many, many boats. So, um, you know, they're going to go on forever as well. So to have that modernization put into your boat, make it feel like you've bought a new boat without buying a new boat mm. is, is just quite incredible. And, it, and it's something that a lot more people can afford to do than buying the new boat as well. So... Brilliant company. Absolutely love their mm. their whole concept and everything that they do. Just just amazing. So have a listen to those podcasts, guys, because they're they're really good ones, really good people. So what's what's the future of Raymarine, do you think? Michelle, what's what do you think is gonna happen? Well, Apart might- from that integration with the boat builders concept. There's some really interesting technology. Um around at the moment. One of the things I find quite fascinating, quite interesting is um, AI and specifically um, autonomous and assisted navigation. Rainmarine's partnered with a company called Avacus. They are um, part of HD Hyundai, a South Korean company um, who make big container ships and uh, engines, those big container ships. And they've invested in a company called, they've set up a company called Avacus who are really focused on bringing the um, assisted and autonomous navigation from big ships. So they actually had, I think they did the first crossing um, across the Pacific of one of their container ships fully autonomous. They had people on the bridge, but they avoided something like over a hundred collisions. The boat actually, the autonomous system navigated around them without any human intervention. Wow. It is amazing. It's really exciting. And I think it's really good for the safety of the industry. Um, And so they're trying to bring that technology into the leisure market. Um, If you look at stats in the leisure market, the majority of accidents that are caused are from operator error, not known understanding surroundings, you know, a lot of stuff that actually AI and assisted and autonomous navigation could help stop mm. you know you know if you think about your car and you know you you veer off a lane over the white line it beeps at you mm. it you know there's you, it's um, driver assisted um cruise control whereas it, your car automatically slows down when there's a car in front of you all these sort of things we're looking to bring in to the boating world to make it so much safer wow that's really exciting yeah and give a really good experience for our customers as well yeah yeah, yeah. we actually have a um, demo to ibex in so October, um, auto docking of a boat. So Avacus and Raymarine have a system of six cameras that we can put on a boat and it links into the Raymarine chart plotter. And from that, you can select uh, where you want to berth, whether you want to berth bow or stern two and port or starboard side two, and the boat does the rest for you. No way. Yes. So we're not going to have to berth the boat anymore. Hopefully not from from fairly soonish. I won't commit on a time frame, but you know, I'd love to be showing more in 2024. Yeah, won't that be fun? Because yeah. that, that's a lot of, um, you know, that I think is the barrier to entry for a lot of people buying a boat. It's, it's the stress. The, the yeah. most stressful part of boating yes. is docking your boat. Yes, uh, we've got a system already called DockSense, which. Uh, allows you to create a bump around your boat and it's really great you could have your your throttle hard hard forward and if your it would the boat won't move the system will stop you but it doesn't dock it for you You still have to understand the wind and the tide and the impacts it has on you so you can still but it at least helps you stop bumping into things whereas this now is taking it to the next level which is you know we're going to be docking the boat for you yeah not to take it away from people because there's plenty of people my husband you know loves driving the boat and you have that experience of driving in and docking is quite an achievement yes. but there's a great opportunity here to grow our industry as you said from people who, can't, who aren't confident or have never been around boats all their life yes. and that's the bit that you say the barrier to entry the thing that's going to stop them buying a boat is oh my goodness I don't want to be docking this especially in high winds or in strong tides yeah yeah. So, so, and I, and I, I, I do agree with the confidence thing. It's actually really nice. If a woman learns how to drive a boat, it, it gives her another confidence level. I swear. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we bought, when we got our uh, forty-seven, I um, 
kicked my husband off the boat because I didn't want him to be stressing. And I um, got a friend on board who's a skipper and, and we had a, a good afternoon of just learning teaching me because a much bigger boat than we were used to how to dock the boat how to maneuver it you know the understanding about the tide and the wind effect on it and you know it's given me confidence my husband generally does drive the boat but I know if there's ever a problem I know I can I can drive it and I can bring it home well I think that is actually that's a point that we need to raise because I I do raise it every now and then on this podcast because it scares me and the number of women that go out on a boat with their husband they know zero about what to do with that Mm. boat if hubby keels over breaks his leg whatever yep um, so I think it's really important that uh, women do actually learn at least the basics so that they understand what they can do to get that boat home or put it out on anchor or whatever needs to be done to make it safe in that situation. So. I absolutely agree. One of the things I've done is a VHF radio course. I don't know if that, I know they do it in the UK. I don't know how that translates globally, but you know, just one of the things, learning how to uh, use your radio, uh, know how to which channel, so channel 16 in the UK for an emergency distress call, uh, make, just make sure you know how to use it, what you need to do. We've actually got a little um, uh, an, a guide. It doesn't matter who you are, actually, whether anyone get, get into trouble on your boat. We've actually just got a little piece of paper we can whip out from um, on our uh, helm station that we could just know what our MSI number is, uh, what our boat name is. Because you know, in panic, you forget all these things, actually. And so, mm. that, you know, I think everyone, you know, for me, women especially, if your husband is the main driver of your boat, do a VHF course, kick your husband off your boat for half a day and, and, and go and do, on, but on your boat as well, go and do mm. a, a training course on your boat on how to just drive it, how to dock it. You know, don't worry about not getting the fenders out, you know, in an emergency situation, you just need to be able to know how to bring that boat home. Exactly right, yeah. And there's, a, I'm going to do a little plug here for, some, for something that uh, okay. is a very simple way of getting to learn how to drive a boat. Um, there's an, a free app called Boatmaster. And you can sit on your lounge um, sofa with your phone and it teaches you how to drive a a twin engine boat. You know how we use our engines to manoeuvre instead of our wheel. Um, It teaches you how to manoeuvre a boat into a berth, which trains your brain so that when you get onto the boat, it's much, much easier for you because it's the whole left, right scenario of, of of that being quite confusing it's wow, brilliant that's awesome i know i know i guess i'm gonna have a go at that yeah, I get home. yeah it's, it's it's really good fun it's a really good app and happens to have been made by my son so ah yeah so very it's, good. Uh, yeah but um and it was it was created because my husband brought my son to metstrode instead of going to um, what we call schoolies in Australia, which is where they all go and get drunk after school. So <laughs> far more proactive coming to Metstrade <laughs> and visiting Europe. Um, and they walked around Metstrade and realised there was nothing that did that. So he went home and created it. Clever boy. I know, I know. So, um, so yeah, Boatmaster is a, a great app to download and, and get you started in that journey of, of driving a boat. Great for the kids as well to start learning. Absolutely. Absolutely, because it's a game. Yeah. So, you know. They're probably it's... better than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, they are when you hand them a piece of electronics. <laughs> yeah, so, so good. So, Michelle, you're thoroughly enjoying your boating lifestyle. Where do, where do you boat? Where do you go boating? Very, very lucky. We live in a place called Swanwick and our boat is kept a minute's walk away at Swanwick Marina at the top of the River Hamble. Uh, we are straight out into the Solent, which I think is one of the greatest uh, places to boat, mainly because it's still really sheltered, but there are so many places you can go on the south coast of England and across the Isle of Wight um, and so many bays you can anchor up in to go and sit and enjoy having a lunch, go swimming, to take part in some water activities. Absolutely fabulous place. Yeah. Yeah. And as you say, the toys are, are all part, they are part of it, aren't they? They are. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so you're thoroughly enjoying your role at Raymarine. I oh, yeah. um, Do you think you'll stay in the boating industry for a long time? Is this, you know, I mean, it's it's such a great industry full of so many great people, I find. Mm-hmm. And, and we get so attached to each other. It's, uh, it's, it's a really nice industry like that. Do you find that? I think it's one of the best industry, industries to work in. Um, it's like a big family. And as I said earlier, people just seem to stay here for so long. I mean, I would, if you'd asked me when I was in my 20s, would I still be with a company, eighteen same company 18 years later? I'd have been an absolute flat no. I mean, you know, I, I've been very lucky to have a lot of career opportunities at Rain Marine and through its acquisitions. But it's more the people. It's a... They're family, they're friends, there's great people. You know, people have been here so long and there's so much 
information, wisdom. People are, are re really willing to help. It's not a cutthroat industry. It's not a nasty industry. It's not backstabbing. Yes, everyone's competitive. You know, there are competitors to, to Raymarine. There's competitors for everybody here. But I think it's done in a really nice way. And, you know, great events like Mets and all the boat shows. I think it's, it's quite a unique industry. You don't get that in many other industries. Well, as um, Darren Vaux was saying this morning from Mycomia, um, here's my hubby. Yes, I know. Yes, but, but you know, I can mention him, okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about, you know, the decarbonisation issue that we have a, now that we need to deal mm. with as an industry because every see, everybody sees us as a, a bad industry yeah. in that space, if you like, um, even though we, we actually contribute a tiny, tiny amount compared to yep. transport. Um, the... It's, it's, we can't do those sorts of things without working together. We need to collaborate and we need to create change by bringing all of us together with all of our different technologies and mm -hmm. all of our different ideas to, um, to create that change. And I think events like Mets Trade, the World Marinas Conference, they, it's wonderful to see how much people do talk to each other, share ideas um, share problems and mm. and help to solve each other's problems together. I think it's a, an amazing industry like that. It is in partnerships. I mean, you, everywhere you look, people are partnering. Um, technology is moving so quickly that you'd be, I think it'd be insane to think any one company could do everything. And I think, you know, that that's critical is, is partnerships and relationships with this industry to help, you know, sustainability, it's a huge topic right now. And you shouldn't just pay lip service to it. You know, our... Our livelihoods and our enjoyment depend on being out on the water, you mm. know, and we have to do something to protect that um, as both individuals, as companies, but as a, as a wider industry and a wider community. And, you know, I, I love working with people. I you know part of the job that I enjoy now in the business development point it is making relationships, meeting new people and being able to develop partnerships. It will really help both the environment and also our industry. Mm. Yeah. Exciting things ahead. You know, Very. It's a, yeah, and Icomia are presenting an, a, an incredible study on that here at Mets Trade. So I'm oh, looking forward to that. that. Yeah, yeah. So um, they've done a lot of work on it. So it's very exciting. Brilliant. And that and that's it's wonderful that we have bodies like Icomia that can do that mm. for us as an industry, so that we can all then have a plan to to work towards, as it were. So thank you so much for being here today, Michelle. I really appreciate you letting me throw you on the mic, as it were. No, thank you for having me, Nikki. I've really enjoyed it and I've really enjoyed chatting to you. Good. Thank you so much. It's actually nice to sometimes go back through our career and, and think about how much we've actually achieved. You forget actually how much you've done actually when you you just take it for granted that you are where you are now but actually talking back over Tuesday has been really great it's sort of a bit of a trip down memory lane about all the different skills that I have done and my journey to get to where I am today yeah well thank you so much for sharing your journey um telling everyone who you were who you are where you are and um that it's it's a brilliant place to be in the boating industry thank you so so if anybody wants to get in touch with you Michelle um how should they do that Please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm on the Michelle Hilljard uh, at Ray Marine and um, send me a little message and I'd love to connect with you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to seeing the Ray Marine stand very soon and I'll see you all on the water soon. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. It really is a privilege to have your ears with us for every episode. Um, thanks to our sponsors, also Quality Marine Clothing. If you would like to become a sponsor of the Boat Princess podcast and join them, then uh, please do contact us by emailing info at theboatprincess.com or send us a DM on Instagram, The Boat Princess. We have a great following on Instagram and, of course, the podcast is extremely popular worldwide. So you're reaching an amazing, dedicated audience that loves boating and loves working in the boating industry or perhaps is considering joining the boating industry. So it's a fantastic audience and uh, we hope that you'll join us in sponsoring us. And if you're not ready to sponsor us yet, but you'd like to support us in a small way, the best way you can do that is by reviewing the podcast 
Or if you go to my website, theboatprincess.com and click on support the podcast, you'll be able to buy me a coffee and that will help this passion project be funded for just a while longer. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you on the water soon.